At some point in your life, it's likely that you, a family member, or a friend has purchased a pretty kick-ass seeming computer, only for it to slow down over time. What a shame that a seemingly awesome computer isn't able to serve as the main rig, right? No more! It's time to revive your favorite computer and keep it around for even longer. Let's take a look. I'm Eeples Vox here to make tech more fun and easier to understand via free educational videos. The laptop I'm looking at today is the Dell XPS M1710. This is a badass laptop for its time, featuring a beautiful 17 inch 1920 by 1200 display, an Intel Centrino dual core CPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce Go 7900 GS graphics chip. It was a pretty hefty workhorse of a rig for the early 2000s. And the build of it, it had everything that teenage epos could dream of. Six USB ports, a DVD drive, Firewire, headphone and microphone jacks, an SD card reader, VGA, DVI, and S video outputs, along with the modem and ethernet port, and the hard drive was easily removable via the dock slot on the right. That made this project even easier. Oh yeah, and it features huge booming speakers, full media control buttons on the front, and LEDs everywhere. This was the gamery aesthetic before that concept even existed. Green LEDs on the speakers, vents an XPS logo on the back, blue LEDs for the media controls, and the trackpad even features a red lit XPS logo. Someone had fun designing this. So what was the problem with this XPS beast? Windows flipping Vista, and the mere two gigabytes of RAM inside. I used air quotes there because at the time 2GB was high end for laptops and computers in general, but Microsoft decided to make a bulky AF operating system that ate RAM for breakfast and made most computers, even high end ones, slow and unresponsive. Install any programs that have any sort of background services and opening the file explorer become one of the strongest tests of patience in the history of personal computing. Trying to use a used Vista build this many years later would be impossible. But we can fix that right up with two things, a solid state drive or SSD and an installation of a Linux operating system. We'll be using the OCZ Tryon 150 500 gig SSD for this project. This is a great SSD with super fast read and write speeds that I've used many times. So thanks to Toshiba for sending one of these out. For this project, I created a couple scenarios. I installed a Lubuntu, a lightweight Linux installation created to perform fast on low end hardware onto a solid state drive to show the optimal operating conditions we can get. A fast OS on a super fast SSD means this computer zooms and vrooms like never before. Suddenly this beast of a PC feels like it was meant to feel when it was made. Not only that, but the media keys are automatically supported by media players in Linux with no crazy driver installations needed. Trying to install drivers for an old PC on a new Windows installation can be a nightmare. But that's easy mode. I didn't stop there, I installed a late 2016 build of Solus OS, a heavier Linux operating system, onto a traditional 2.5 inch laptop hard drive as well. The result? Still responsive and snappy as can be. This thing is a beautiful Linux machine. Solus OS, even with graphical animations, runs perfectly. Loading YouTube videos in Firefox and multitasking still works great. Try running more than three programs at once in the Vista build and you'll want to pull your hair out. To really test performance here, I decided to test the time it takes to cold boot from a powered down state, not just into the operating system, but until the operating system is usable for multitasking and the YouTube video could be played and skimmed. As you can see, this is still an older laptop and boot times won't be instant, especially without EFI BIOS. But the time to usability was vastly improved with Linux. Lubuntu running on the SSD booted up and was usable the fastest, followed by Solus OS on the hard drive. It took nearly five minutes for Vista to be remotely usable, and even then, RAM was mostly pegged in the 90% range, making it overall very unresponsive. I wasn't fully satisfied with this test though, so I went ahead and recreated the Windows Vista installation, which took for forever to install by the way, on the same SSD and ran my test again. Total boot to operation time was cut in half. It still took longer than even the Solus OS boot from the hard drive, but was much quicker than the original Vista build. You can't get past the fact that the two gigabytes of RAM installed was just not enough to multitask heavily with Windows Vista, but the ability to swap RAM to disk quicker with an SSD allowed it to keep up just a little bit more. I still much preferred the Lubuntu installation though for obvious reasons. This may not be entirely new information to all of you, but people aren't considering Linux enough in their computing choices, and there are a lot of really cool laptops out there being sent to die when they function just fine still today. 
If you want to buy a new computer made for Linux and unleashing your potential, check out our sponsor, System76. System76 is the best IMO system distributor for Linux-based PCs. I just keep drooling over their new Oryx Pro workstation with a 4K high DPI display. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. I have a couple HP Pro books or Elite books that I'm excited to look at soon too. I'm Vox, and I will see you next time.